Hi, this is Erika Kassab from Small Robot Studio. In today's video, I'll show you how to take a model from Nomad Sculpt into Procreate for texturing. There are two ways to paint a 3D model. Inside Nomad, you can use the vertex paint technique. We can assign a color for each vertex or point in the mesh. The color of each face will be an average of the points that surround them. The problem with this approach is that we need really high topology for the paint to look good. Meshes like this will have pixelated results. The second method is by creating UV maps, a process that applies a 2D image into a 3D object. For this to work, we need to unwrap this object into a flat surface, like peeling an orange into a table. The resolution of the texture depends on the image we apply to it so the number of polygons will not affect the outcome. Let me show you how to prepare a model for this inside Nomad. Here's the model that I created in my beginner's guide. The very first thing that I want to do is create a copy of this file. I'm going to open the project menu, tap on save as, tap on the plus icon and label this in a recognizable way. Next thing, I'm going to go into the scene menu where I can see all the different objects that make my model. And I want to make sure that I group together all the things that are going to share the same kind of material. For example, these corners of the book. All of them are going to be made of metal, so I want to have them all together. For example, I got this loose pages and the block of pages as separate objects. Since they're going to be made out of the same material, to group them together, all I have to do is select both items with the checks and tap on Simple Merge. If I solo this object by tapping on this button, button, then you will see that those geometries are going to be together as just one object. Now I'm going to turn on my wireframe with this bottom button again. As you can see, right now I have really high topology. These meshes are quite dense, which was good while I was sculpting, but is not the best for UV mapping. To fix this, I'm gonna go into the topology menu and I'm gonna click on the third top icon. It doesn't even have a name, it just has three dots. The very first thing that I wanna do is decimate this object. Let's tap on it to see what it does. In short, it's creating bigger triangles, bigger faces in the areas that have no detail, while preserving detail where it's needed. What this is doing is reducing by half the poly count. You can see up here the number of faces and vertices that we have. I'm gonna tap it once again so you can see how it gets reduced. Every so often you might want to turn off the wireframe to see that the shapes are not getting destroyed. Right now it's looking pretty good, so I might be able to go a bit lower. If you focus on the outer UV unwrap section, you will see there is a warning where it says that this process might take a while if your meshes are higher than 100k vertices. This is why we want to do decimation to help the software perform better. Now that this model has been optimized, I'm gonna tap where it says unwrap and this is what it looks like. On the background we can see that flat UV map that Nomad created. And my model is shown with a UV checkerboard. You can turn off the UV map at the background if you tap on this icon that just show up at the bottom. If you want to see this model without the wireframe, you just have to go into the shading menu and choose PVR instead of PVR UV. You gotta make sure that you follow this process for every single geometry on your mesh. Select the next one on scene, go to the multi-resolution menu, maybe solo it to focus only on it, just made it a couple times, check that you preserve the amount of detail that you want, and once you're happy with it, unwrap Atlas. Don't forget, the higher the poly count, the longer it's gonna take the software to calculate this UVs. Some geometries might require a little bit of preparation before I decimate them. For example, this is traps on the spine. You would appreciate the sort of weird results that I'm getting here. 
before doing anything, I want to get rid of these stretch polygons. These faces that are not uniform compared to everything else in the mesh. So, inside the topology menu, I'm gonna go into the voxel tab and remesh this. You might need to change this value to make sure that the shape is preserved as you want it. Let's go back to the UV tab and tap on decimate. But there is one more problem. These nice sharp corners are getting lost. To make sure that these are well preserved, I'm gonna use the pinch brush. And I'm gonna set it really high. This is an infinite slider, so I can take it much further than 100%. And I will go around through any corner that I wanna make it look sharp. What this brush is doing is attracting all the geometry together. Like its name say, it's pinching it. Look at the difference between these two corners. So you might want to consider spending a bit of time for nicer results. You will notice that these automatic UVs are not as nice as the ones that I presented at the start. To get this sort of results for optimized and production ready assets, there are extra steps to follow and you will need more robust software like Blender, ZBrush or Maya. The auto UVs that Nomad Sculpt creates are good enough for painting in Procreate, but they are never production ready. Our Patreon supporters can access this model that I created with optimized UVs ready for painting along with many other assets. You can also check out my 3 hour course Sculpting a Realistic Head in Nomad. A massive thank you to everyone who is already supporting the channel via Patreon or through Gumroad. Let's carry on. It's time to send this file into Procreate. Inside our project menu I'm gonna scroll down into the export section and choose OBJ. I wanna make sure that normals is selected. I'm gonna tap on export OBJ. You can save it anywhere that you want on your device or tap directly into Procreate. The camera navigation is the exact same as in Nomad. One finger in the background to rotate, two fingers to pan or pinching two fingers to zoom. Within the brushes you will find a new section called materials. In the layer section you will notice that all of those geometries that we grouped together are set as one material. You can turn off the visibility by enabling this check. Within this group you can add several layers. When we are doing 2D painting we only need color, but painting materials is a lot more complex. Think about different items you own of the same color. Some might be made of metal, some will be quite shiny but not made of metal. Maybe the surface is polished or glossy or its imperfections make it look matte. There's a lot of qualities that make materials. Nevertheless, Procreate keeps it very simple. A channel for color, roughness and metal. Only three things. We can see these channels by tapping on the cube icon within a layer and to work only in one channel at a time by tapping on each. Inside color, we are only painting pigment variations. Roughness will define how glossy or matte a material is. White means completely rough. Black means not rough at all. So it's glossy. Gray tones will give you in-between results. This channel only works with grayscale. Finally, metalness. Self-explanatory. What is made of metal? It also only works by painting grayscale. Best practice is to either use black or white. No in-betweens. Objects are either metallic or not. If what you are looking for is to achieve imperfections, simply add them to the roughness channel. This is a common practice when 3D texturing. If you select the general layer and a material brush, you will be editing the three channels at the same time. As a 3D texture artist, I actually never do this. I rather have the control of each individual channel. A fundamental tool when doing 3D textures is the ability to manipulate the lighting environment. Honestly, Procreate makes this really difficult because I have to go into a lot of menus. Softwares like 3D Code, Substance Painter or Marie are one click away. Tap the wrench icon, tap on 3D and select Edit Lighting and Environment. You can tap and drag these cubes 
to change the location of the lighting. By tapping on these cubes, I can change the intensity of these lights and even add some color by increasing saturation and changing the hue. But this is gonna add a red tint to anything I paint. So I do not recommend it. In fact, in the environment section, I'm gonna choose the studio setting. When setting up the slides, I'm not trying to make it look pretty, but rather readable. A good contrast between light and shadow. No tinted lights affecting my color perception. Let's make this a skull made of gold. Open its channels, select color, choose a desaturated ochre color, tap and drag this icon into your model to color it. Gold is made of metal, so, so the metallic channel has to be white. My object is said to be metallic, but it doesn't really look reflective. That's because my roughness channel is set to white, resulting in a matte, not reflective metal. If I choose a darker color and apply it, the result is gonna be much different. I guess this looks golden, but it looks a bit too boring because it's too perfect. Let's make sure that we are in our roughness channel select a brush with a cool texture let's change this color lower the intensity and add some variations use more than one brush and different tones of gray by adding variety to the roughness map this metal no longer looks perfect i'm gonna add one more layer to paint some dirt in the concavities of this skull as if it's been building up with the passage of time and because dirt is not very reflective within the roughness map, I'm gonna set this color really high and get rid of that reflective quality where we have more dirt. Let's carry on with the corner projectors. Select layer, open the channels, and for the colors I'm gonna select an orange. I wanna go for a rusted look. These are made of metal, so let's set metalness to white. This time I'm gonna set roughness to a mid-tone to make it slightly reflective. I don't want to compete with the skull, which is the protagonist in my book. The base layer is ready. Let's create a layer on top to add some variations. First, in color. The color of rust ranges from red to orange to yellow. I like to lower the opacity and build up the color. I'm not using any fancy brush, I'm still working with this ones included in the material section. And once you're happy with this, let's move on to the roughness layer. I'm gonna choose lighter tones. I wanna have clear contrast with the skull. I wanna make sure this is nowhere as shiny as the skull. A few accents with a darker color will make it look interesting. Keep them subtle. Let's work now with the body of the book which I want to make like green leather. Roughness, I'm gonna bring this again into a gray scale. Leather tends to be a little bit shiny. Leather is absolutely not metallic, so I'm gonna keep this channel black. Add a new layer, get into the color section, let's choose a darker tone of green, and pick the brush called Old Skin. This is a really cool brush that already has built in this leather texture. When texturing, variation is key. So maybe use a smudge tool or your eraser to break this perfect pattern. Think about the areas of the book that would suffer more friction. Within the roughness channel, you also want to add some variation. This is one of my favorite brushes for creating variation. Let's add a new layer between these two to create some variation on that leather color. For the areas that are a bit more exposed, I'm gonna choose a lighter color. As always, to blend, lower this opacity. Make sure to break any repetition pattern by using your smudge tool. Subtle changes of hues are also a great idea. Don't be afraid of using a color that feels too different from the original. Even something like purple can create really cool accents as long as you apply it with subtlety. Finally, why not? Some darker colors to those areas that would be less exposed and more likely to gather dirt. See what a massive difference it makes to add these color variations in between. 
Around those unprotected edges I'm gonna change the color completely as if the pigment is falling off. Don't get too obsessed about choosing the perfect brush. Most of what I'm doing is picking random brushes and experimenting. The inside is gonna be mostly hidden so I don't really care about rogue paint. For these side straps I also want to make them out of leather but a darker tone to create some contrast. Finally let's work on the pages of this book. I'm gonna hide all the other geometries that are in the way. Let's apply a light desaturated color as the base. As for our roughness, the color has to be quite light. One more layer to create variations and I'm gonna use the water brushes. This time, instead of painting on the 3D texture, I'm gonna open the range and enable show 2D texture. There are times in which working on a 2D texture is gonna be more efficient. Now it's time to show off what we have done. Procreate is no good for that, so we'll take this model back to Nomad. I'm gonna tap on the range icon and in the share tab choose OBJ. Wait for it for a second to generate those texture maps and once it's ready, tap directly into the Nomad icon. Back in Nomad you're gonna see again this weird colorful checkerboard. Make sure that you turn off this button, button that says UV and you will be able to see your textures. If you still cannot quite see them, make sure that on the shading menu you have chosen PBR UV because just PBR will not show those lovely textures. I'm gonna get rid of this outline inside display settings and within this shading menu have some fun. Maybe change the lighting environment, rotate it a bit, even add some extra lights to the scene. Now it's the time to show off, so have fun with this. Finally, tap in the Nomad icon and choose Turntable. And that's it! As always, I look forward to seeing your creation. Feel free to tag me in social media. I'll see you soon with a new video. Happy texturing! That's it for this tutorial. If you find it useful, make sure that you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, as we are bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord and more by clicking in the link below.